internet! I'm Elliot the Purple Left Doofus, and welcome to the beginning chapters of Pest Control by Bill Fitzhug. Let's just dive right into it, shall we? We'll be covering chapters 1 through 3, so if you haven't read up to that point, please do before you start this video, because I'm going to spoil it all for you! The book starts by introducing you to the protagonist, Bob Dylan. It's just like the singer, but spelled different. And very unfortunate for him. Bob was actually born a few years before the singer became famous, but he was born in such a time that it became an incredible hindrance for him when he was a child. Boy, howdy, can I, Elliot, who was born in 1982, right before a certain movie came out, relate. Bob Dylan is an exterminator of bugs. And right now he works for a company that uses chemicals to kill said bugs. But he believes that he has a better way of doing that. And he wants to use predators of these bugs to kill them. Rather than the chemicals that are destroying the environment. Early on in the first chapter, Bob Dylan reaches his boiling point while at work and quits his job when his boss starts yelling at him. In a most breathtaking fashion as he takes his poison sprayer and practically shoves it up his boss's nose. Enter the story of Klaus. Also an exterminator, but of a different kind. He exterminates people. That's right, people, Klaus is a hitman. He goes out and he kills bad people for a living. And he has a very strict rule that he applies himself to. He only kills those that he believes deserve to die. It's soon brought up that Klaus is suffering with depression. And he can't relate to that every once in a while. Bob is on public transport home after quitting his job and he is trying to figure out a way to explain to his wife and his lovely child that he Quit. And as he's thinking of ways to explain that to them, he's reminiscing about how his romance with his wife blossomed. Now, if you watched my read-through of Ready Player One, you know that I hate romance. And this part of the book was very romantic, but it was understandable because you need to understand why he's fretting, telling her that he quit his job because he's fearing that she's going to leave him. And while you're listening to about how this romance blossomed, you're realizing how truly in love with this woman is and how he doesn't want to lose her. The next chapter begins with a wonderful character named Marcel. Marcel is the man that hires Hitman. And Marcel pays Kloss for his job that he did in the previous chapter and offers a new job for him to kill off a family man who the rest of his family wants to kill so that they can inherit his millions and millions of dollars. Kloss respectively declines this offer because he doesn't believe killing for greed is a good enough reason to kill. Good on you, assassin! So then Marcel and his assistant, Jean, need to find a new hitman. And Jean offers to call Chantel, a lady who kills people. Over the next few pages, Bob's bug room is explained, where he has all different types of bugs. And my favorite part of this little section is when he's using the bugs to perform his own little symphony in his study. It's awesome. Then we go back to Marcel, as Chantel is there explaining that she can't take the job either. And then they list off about four or five different killers that might be available to take the job. And how one of them is with a family now, and is a family man, and they can't believe that he quit the job for family. And another, an American, is just too uncouth to take a job like this. Chantel just kind of saunters off, and Jean walks up to Marcel to ask him what he needs to do, and they decide that they need to put out a newspaper ad. They're flipping through all of their old newspaper ads, and they realize that none of them are going to work for this specific job or the hiring of a new killer. 
so they have to come up with a brand new ad. Now we go back to Bob as he walks into his wife's bedroom and he says, Oh, wonderful wife, Mary, I have beautiful news! And she starts kissing. Oh, did you get a raise? No. Did you buy me those things I wanted? No. Well then what? I'm tired of guessing. I have to get to work. I got fired! <laughs> what? And Mary is obviously not happy with this wonderful, wonderful news. And Bob spends a lot of time trying to explain to her exactly why this is wonderful. Because now he can pursue his dream of environmentally friendly pest control. Bob! We don't have the money for that sort of thing. We're behind on rent, we're behind on electricity, we're behind on all of our bills. I am tired of living month to month. <sighs> but sweetie, if this works out, it'll be amazing for us. And you know, I just believe that this is our million dollar idea. You have one month to make this work. Honey, I need at least six. Two. Two, that's as high as I'm going. Two! I can work with two. Yeah, that'll work. And so now Bob is elated to find out that he can finally pursue his dream. But also on the condition that if he gets a job offer, he has to take it. Because they really, really, really need the money. The whole time that they're having this argument, they're doing it in front of their lovely child, Kate. And Kate, I don't want to say is a foul-mouthed little twerp, but she's a little twisted. She is very kind-hearted. She is a very normal kid. She just happens to like violence. And not violence in the Wednesday Addams sort of sense. She just enjoys watching the violence and using her streetlight smarts to get what she wants. And that point will be made apparent to you very, very soon, as there is a knock on the door right after Mary leaves. Bob goes and opens the door, and it's the lovely landlord. Yo, Bob! Where's my 320 bucks that you've owed me for three weeks now? You pay it now, or you get the fuck out. I'm sorry, sir, we're working as hard as we can. But, you know, we'll have it for you, I swear. Yeah, yeah, I've heard this now for about 20 days. I'm tired of it. You pay now, or you get out. And you take your little girl with you. And then, while they're having this argument, a lovely lady from the electrical company walks up. I don't care how cute and adorable your little brat is. You're getting out of my house. Uh, excuse me. Yes? <laughs> Please don't talk about that little girl that way. Especially not in front of her. Listen, sugar tits. I'll talk to anyone however the fuck I want on my own property. Now you just get in the back of the line. I'm getting money from him first, and then you can do your thing. Uh, excuse me? You heard me, lady! <laughs> and this just kind of goes back and forth for a bit. Until finally the landlord concedes and leaves. And the electrical lady steps up to do her business. Uh, Mr. Bob Dylan? Is that really your name? Yeah, but I'm, no, not related, sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm actually here to shut your power off. I really don't want to do that, but listen, I see your little child there. She's a great little kid. Why don't you just go down to the offices and pay what you can. If they see you making an effort, we won't have to shut anything. Thanks, miss. I really appreciate it. It's at this moment when his little child, Kate, has a wonderful plan. And she runs off into her room and she comes back out with a little slip of paper. And she says, Hey, miss! Would you like to buy some Girl Scout cookies? Ooh, Girl Scout cookies. I can't resist those. Why don't you give me a box of Thin Mints? That'd be five dollars! <laughs> five dollars? Aren't they like two fifty at the street corner? I kind of have to protect my overhead. And she points to her father. <laughs> it's a brilliant scene. Bob then starts copying flyers for his new bug business and resumes at the local copy shop. 
And that's when you realize that this book was written ages ago. As he's making these copies, an old co-worker Johnny comes up. And he says, oh, Bob, come on. Come on, have a drink with me. Bob says, oh, I, I, I wish I could, but I'm broke. Please, Bob, it's Johnny. I'll pay for you. Come on, just have a drink with me, please. Fine. What could a drink hurt? And Bob and Johnny go to the bar and they get hammered. And Bob has his flyers and his resume and they're looking through the newspaper for jobs because Bob desperately needs a job. When they come across an ad that says, Exterminator needed for one weekend only, paying $50,000. And they're like, no way is this real. No way is this possibly real. And Johnny takes a picture of him with a Polaroid, shoves his resume and a flyer in an envelope, and sends it off. The story moves on to Klaus, where you find that he has been gambling away his earnings from his last job. And then, back to Bob, as he is fantasizing about time interviewing him for his new revolutionary pest control service. As he's fantasizing about this interview, we get to learn how he got interested in bugs, and how it first started with Urban legends. You know, the ones about the lady with the beehive that never washed her hair and then, like, had a bunch of bugs in her brain. Or the guy with a bunch of earwax who had a bunch of bugs in his brain. Or the other people with a whole bunch of bugs in their brain. Those kinds of urban legends. And then he was forced to do a book report that he didn't want to do when he was in the library looking up bugs. And he found this one bug that fascinated him so much that it just kind of blossomed his interest in bugs, and his interest in learning. As we're learning about this, a visitor comes to Bob's apartment, and he believes it's going to be his wonderful landlord trying to kick him out. But who it actually is, is Marcel. Uh, excuse me, are you, uh, Bob Dylan? Yes. Who are you? You see, I, I have your flyer and your resume, and we are very interested in your, shall we say, services? Oh. Well, please, come in. Well, thank you. Marcel just kind of looks around his place, and he's like, this is definitely not the home of Contract Killer. It's the perfect cover! And Bob thinks that he's hiring him to get rid of rats, or bugs, or cockroaches. Marcel says, We have this job, see? And we're hoping that you can do it for us. And he hands Bob a manila envelope. And Bob opens it up and there's a picture of a guy and a whole bunch of information about this guy. And Bob is immediately confused. Uh, is... Is this the guy with the pest problem? Oh, I guess you could say that. <laughs> um, but before I sign you on, could I see possibly some of your incidents? Bob gets very excited. Oh, of course! Of course! Please, please come with me, come with me! And Bob takes him to his bug room, where he has all the different bugs, but they're in these containers that don't actually show the bugs and he's showing off his bees that are in this opaque box and he kind of taps on it and it buzzes and Marcel just gets terrified and excited at the same time because he's terrified that, you know, Bob's actually going to kill him but he's excited because this looks like nothing he's ever seen before. Bob shows him this research project on a bug that has spines that are called assassination bugs and they poison their prey before they eat their prey. And Marcel is so insanely excited because he believes that this means that Bob is an actual assassin. And that's when it kind of clicks for Bob that Marcel wants him to kill this guy. And he starts to get very, very terrified of Marcel. He starts kind of grabbing up all the papers and shoving them at Marcel. And he's like, no, 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 get out, get out. I don't want this job. Get out! And Marcel just gets terrified because Bob is lunging at him with all of this equipment. And he's like, no! Stay away! 
And every time Bob says, you know, I don't want this job, I don't want this job, Marcel is hearing, I want this job, but I can't say I want it because I'm not actually an assassin. And so Marcel is like, oh yes, of course, you don't want this job. <laughs> I will run away. And Bob is just trying to, you know, pound in the fact that he does not want to kill anyone. Eventually Bob shoves Marcel out of his house. And Bob believes that he got the point that he doesn't want the job, while Marcel believes that Bob was so excited to take the job, and he was the perfect fit for the job. And that's where today's section ends. Tomorrow we will be reading chapters 4 through 6, so get on that. And I have a question for you today. Since today's section was all about misunderstandings, I'm wondering when was the last time that you had a misunderstanding with someone that you knew or didn't know? And how did that go? Next week's book is The She-Hulk Diaries by Marta Acosta. Go out and grab it by any legal means necessary. Buy it on a Kindle, buy it in a bookstore, rent it at a library, borrow it from a friend. Just make sure that it's legal and get to reading before I ruin it for you. I have been the Pro Player Diffus reminding you to watch a pajama radius. And I will see you all in the next chapters of Pest Control by Bill Fitzhugh. Toodles!